Number 5. Huge Teeth Without a bit of fossilized evidence, we may never have had any proof of the Megalodon at all, unless you count the 2018 Jason Statham movie, but thankfully this ferocious sea monster was leaving a lot of its teeth behind. Megalodon even translates loosely to big tooth, give you a sense of how important those things were. One of our earliest and most well-known reports and signs of life from this once impressive creature stem from a story from the British survey ship, the HMS Challenger wherein two teeth that were collected from near the sea floor in 1875 while on a survey expedition passed Tahiti. The teeth collected were illuminating. A single megalodon tooth measures anywhere from 5 to 7 inches long. Compare that with an average great white shark tooth, which measures a little bit under 3 inches, and you start to understand where some of our fascination with the megalodon stems from. Interestingly enough though, efforts to carbon date the teeth reveal that they were dated about 10,000 to 25,000 years ago, instead of the estimates from scientists saying the megalodon went extinct 2.6 million years ago. Now could this be the paper trail suggesting the megalodon is still swimming around somewhere out there? It's difficult to properly study megalodon fossils as the only parts of them that fossilize are their teeth and a bit of their vertebrae, keep note of that for the rest of the video, as the rest of them are made of mostly cartilage, like most sharks. However. Their teeth are found fairly commonly, with Florida being one of the best hunting spots if you're ever looking to take home some megalodon teeth as a souvenir, maybe make into a really sweet necklace. It's actually even the official state fossil of North Carolina. And if you're learning now that the states have fossils, you are not alone because I did not know that every state had a fossil. Bit of a tangent, but you really should look the list up because they are not equal even a little bit. Colorado has the Stegosaurus as their official fossil, and then Connecticut has footprints as their fossil. I don't. Totally unrelated, but that just seems completely unfair. Now, while I've got you here listening to me yammering on about fossils, if you've been liking these videos, why not hammer the old like button? Helps us out a lot and costs you nothing but a little bit of finger stress. Number four, royal teeth. As always, dudes, if you dig what we do here on Top 5 Scary, click that like button. Help us out on our end or throw a comment down below for us. Do you think this thing is still swimming around out there or is this like long gone? The oceans are pretty big. When famous historian and biologist Sir David Attenborough visited the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge last month at Kensington Palace, he brought a very, very old surprise for their son, Prince George. I mean, what surprise doesn't this child already have, you know? Well, apparently a huge megalodon tooth David found in Malta in the mid 1960s. And just make sure you take real good care of it. Oh, there it goes, and now it's broken. Seems all fun and outdoorsy, right? And a lovely present for our maybe once future king and other future king. But the Maltese government made a statement that made people think a little bit longer about this innocent gift. Reporters have brought to light the importance of historic valuables farmed and mined from the Malta area, and this is a perfect example of finders keepers. The Times of Malta reported that Culture Minister Jose Herrera said that he planned to get the conversation started on reclaiming the tooth from the young royal and returning it to Malta. Malta was a former British colony, so the fact that it could go on display among other treasures in the country's national collection is definitely worth considering. In the Middle Ages, many people believed shark teeth were magical talismans and called them tongue stones. Hundreds of years ago, shark teeth from Malta were among the very first fossils to be correctly aligned and interpreted as being related to the shark creature. That's pretty sick. And that's history right there, so we need to respect that. I'm not really sure how that's going to work with things found in the water, like is it pirate code at the time, international water type stuff. Either or, I think it's a good conversation to have. If the treasures and archaeological finds are found in said country, pertaining to said people, is it said country's property? What do you think? Number three, Megalodon 3D. Okay, so personally, I've never stood next to a Megalodon model myself. However, I have stood next to lots of yellow school buses in my life. And I know that uh, it's just a bit bigger and a bit fatter than that. So, yeah, I get it. It was huge. But I don't really get it, you know? It's hard without depth perception. Well, lucky for us, the past few discoveries of sister species and bigger and bigger bones and teeth have nudged scientists in the direction of building a life-size model, complete to scale. Fully stocked, complete with jaws and bones and everything. Just so you can visually picture how many actual human beings this thing can fit inside its mouth right in front of your six-year-old. Just this last year, designers and computer biologists mocked up a rough 3D model and flirted with slapping it on together. Now, a pretty real megalodon shark is now floating above heads at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Researchers used a megalodon vertebrae column from Belgium, 
a tooth from the US, and a contorum cranium, the cartilage equivalent of the skull from a great white shark, to help build this 3D model. Then they used a full body scan of a great white shark to estimate how flesh would then sit on a megalodon skeleton. A team led by Jack Cooper, paleobiologist at Swansea University, used 3D modeling from a rare, well-preserved Meg spinal column to whiteboard some numbers about the shark's movement and behavior. A complete 3D model. By comparing the figure to modern sharks, they were able to understand better of the shark's swimming speed, stomach value, and calorie needs. We just learned about an entire animal we've never met from scanning my microbes on a tooth. Like, and now we have a giant model. Science rules. It would have been almost like 60 feet weighing somewhere around 180,000 pounds. Like, why? Just why? Number two, supernovas. It's a no-brainer that sharks are affected by climate change. Butterfly effect, you know? You take some algae out of the north and then some ant species in Lithuania starves, which makes someone else starve. It's called the ecosystem. And sometimes anomalies happen that alter and change that for us without our consent. As in mass coronal ejections. Basically terrifying solar flares that mess up our atmosphere. And this actually might have been one of the reasons that this ancient mommy shark do 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 is no longer with us. About 2.6 million years ago, an oddly bright light arrived above a prehistoric sky and lingered there for weeks and months. It was a supernova, some 150 light years away from Earth. A new study suggests that within a few hundred years, well after the supernova had faded from Earth, a tsunami of cosmic energy from that star explosion reached our planet. The rain of particles showered our atmosphere and the researchers say touching off climate change and triggering more of a mass extinction of everything large in the ocean, including our friend here, the Megalodon. In the Journal of Astrobiology, Adrian Mellet, a professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Kansas, said that recent papers about ancient seabed deposits of iron isotopes provided evidence and backed up the timing and distance that the specific supernova had. 36% of the largest marine animals like sharks, whales, turtles back then, all disappeared. The extinction was concentrated in coastal waters where larger organisms would have caught greater radiation from the cosmic muons. They think basically the bigger the creature was, the bigger the increase of radiation would have been. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, what could have killed this thing off? It was top dog, it should still be around, right? It couldn't have run out of food. It's not like they were hunted out of extinction. Just when science is terrifying, it has a way of balancing things out, doesn't it? With something way more terrifying, like a star exploding. And number one, relocation. Okay, so apparently sharks keep it the same for like millions of years, and then all of a sudden just pull a fast one on us. Like saltwater sharks in history have been known to just wash up in like Lake Erie all of a sudden. If you've seen the news or Twitter recently with the amount of disaster floods we have right now with Hurricane Ian in Florida, apparently it's blowing sharks everywhere. This is kind of harmless and I'm sure they're gonna end up back where they belong, but Arctic deep sharks are now being found in the Caribbean. Hey Kyle, uh, <laughs> it's a shark, what's the big deal? Uh, they have a routine, people. They stick to one area and habitat for like zillions of years. We're in a weird twilight zone right now where sharks are ready for an upgrade. Apparently the size of the sharks in the past couple of years have grown a couple inches as well. That's like us losing two toes all of a sudden for evolution's sake. It's not normal. It's not just like calories in, calories out type deal. Their body needs to adapt. For example, Greenland sharks are the longest living vertebrates in the world, capable of living up to 400 plus years. That puts us back to about 1572 when Queen Elizabeth I was ruling, when these things were born. This past spring, scientists were able to get up close and personal with said Greenland shark, but found it just off the coast of Belize. Finding anything thousands of miles from its usual hunting grounds is unusual, but an ancient frigid water dwelling shark in shallow hot Caribbean water? It's a little concerning. Devanshi Kasana, a marine biologist at Florida International University within the Predator Ecology and Conservation Lab, first thought that what she was looking at was a six gill shark, which is known to live in the really deep warm waters. Nope, a shark from the other side of the globe just enjoying a hot bath swimming. So are they evolving? Like what's happening here? The 400 year old cold shark just decided it wants to mix it up, I guess. Horrifying. Horrifying on all counts. Number five, the mystery sea monster. Starting off at number five, a research crew in Australia was studying the movement pattern of sharks, attaching a tracking device to a nine foot long shark to observe and report on its migration habits. What they found was a lot more compelling and a lot more disturbing than just monitoring a shark's Fitbit. After attaching the device, the team found that the shark had rose in temperature steeply and it also descended approximately 2,000 feet below where it should be, 
where it then stayed for the better part of a week. Surely it was just doing a little sharky sightseeing. Occasionally ascending and descending. From here, the trail goes completely cold. No data, no insights. Until about four months later, the tracking device and absolutely nothing else washed up on a beach in southern Australia. The crew was completely stumped. No answers. Something had eaten their shark, that much was obvious, but what? Well, their best guess isn't going to provide you much comfort because their hypothesis was that it must have been a much larger, much meaner shark preying on a smaller one like a schoolyard bully. Which is six kinds of terrifying if the best thing scientists can come up with to explain this is, oh there's a gigantic shark with a taste for other sharks swimming around and oh yeah, we have no idea what it actually is and to be honest, we have no idea where it could be. It's great when scientists are kind of just throwing guesses at the wall. Unfortunately, no brighter insights about just what exactly it was that ate that original shark can be found because, well, they just never found the thing. So whatever did eat it could very well still be out there. Let's just be thankful that whatever the thing that ate it was, it's hiding out in Australia. And to our Australian viewers, maybe just uh, check the water a little bit before your next surfing trip for me, okay? For me. Number four, fish finder. Now, even though there is a great deal of evidence that the Meg is long since extinct and hasn't swam through our waters in a long time, that really has not stopped us from trying to find it. Scientists like tying up loose ends, and I know if there was even a possibility of a giant shark swimming around out there, I would like to put a pin in that. Worst case scenario, you never find the thing, and oh no, you get to take a bunch of beautiful tours of the ocean with all your scientist buddies. Best case scenario, you find proof of a once thought extinct legendary species and get heralded as a pioneer in your field, so really, it's a win-win to keep hunting for it. Earlier this month, the Atlantic Shark Institute thought that they got closer than anybody else. A routine survey operation was disturbed when on the fish finder, a scan showing what looked to be a 50 foot long titan of a shark appeared on the radar. The team thought they had finally found it for real. And I mean, can you blame them? The image that showed up on their scanner looks like the last thing you would see in a shark horror movie. The researchers, presumably frozen in fear, analyzed the scan until it started to move after 15 minutes. But before they could start writing any of their wills, their fears were put to rest when it turned out the shape was actually just a school of mackerel pulling a pretty good Atlantic prank. The team said that although the Megalodon is recorded as having gone extinct 3 million years ago, that for a few minutes they themselves were confused and thought maybe it had returned. I think it definitely says something if even the brightest uh, scientific shark experts can be scared into thinking the Meg is real just by seeing a particularly convincing shadow while out on the water. Number 3. Whale Bite Although the Megalodon was one of the biggest creatures swimming and splashing around in its heyday, these days, our king of the ocean is the blue whale, the biggest creature in the world. Weighing as much as 10 elephants, a whale is a bit more than any shark could chew. In 2021, the carcass of a blue whale washed up on a Cape Town beach in South Africa. Locals were stumped because the whale in question happened to be missing almost half of it from a gigantic bite. Like a gigantic bite. Naturally, speculation ran wild. I mean, what could have possibly caused a bite of that caliber outside the very serious and strong scientific possibility of Godzilla munching around looking for a late night snack. Wouldn't happen to be another school of mackerel all working in tandem, would it? Or could it be our favorite elusive cryptid rearing his head, the Megalodon? Scientists and researchers were scrambling trying to find answers as to what could have caused this. The bite marks were massive, and it was unclear just from initial studies what the attacking creature was. It was covered in lacerations and bite marks all the way down to its tail. The real question though is why only half the whale got eaten? Eyes bigger than your stomach, old Megalodon, my friend? If I was a gigantic shark and I was going after a whale, the least I would do is finish all of it. Couldn't finish your whale and wasted all that good blubber. There's starving sharks who don't have any blubber to eat at all. Try and be more considerate, please. Number two, Mega Nursery. Though the Megalodon might be renowned for its gargantuan size and prowess as a prehistoric apex predator, even terrifying mega sharks have to start somewhere small, right? Somewhere to get your little flippers and chompers some practice before setting your sights in the big open waters and big prey? Well, it's not quite an aquatic preschool, but it's the next best thing. Researchers from the University of Florida uncovered what they believe to be the world's first megalodon nursery located in Panama. The researchers found a shallow stretch of the Gatton Formation in which over 400 megalodon teeth fossils were collected. Most interestingly enough though, was that the teeth in question were all greatly undersized compared to their usual finds on record, indicating that these were most likely fossils from young megalodons trying out their training teeth and seeing how well they could bite. 
Mama Megalodons would go here to have their babies, and from there, the baby Megs could swim to their heart's content, picking off easy prey, and getting some serious on-the-job experience before joining the workforce as a terror of the seas. It's a lot of fun actually trying to imagine a baby Megalodon. Would it be cute? I feel like it would be cute. Ba baby anythings are pretty cute. I mean, a baby version of a 60-foot shark might still be a little bit terrifying. Who's to say it's not just like the size of a regular shark? Should probably be careful talking about baby sharks so much because the last thing I would want is for any of us to have to spend the rest of this video with the children's nursery rhyme stuck in our head, so we should probably press on. Number one. Now, as I mentioned before, all the way back in point number five, if you can remember, it's difficult to get down any research and hard data on megalodon fossils as they were mostly made up of cartilage, you know, the stuff like your ears and nose, so they didn't leave behind a lot of bones for us to pick through. And there's a reason you don't see that many shark skeletons in museums. Now what they do leave behind is their teeth, which are found pretty regularly, and in some very rare cases, their vertebrae. One of the best and most preserved megalodon fossils actually happens to be these vertebrae, which are currently chilling in the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences Conservatories located in Brussels. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Now, it's here that we got some serious scientific development on the megalodon. Recently, a CT scan of the vertebrae was able to reveal some very, very illuminating information. Number one being that sharks grow their vertebrae on in layers, just like the way trees add rings with age. So I guess the next time you and your friends all need to find out how old a shark is, just crack it open and count the rings. Please don't do that. I don't advocate for that. I mean, that's actually what they did here, though. The scan had 46 rings in it, meaning the sample of the megalodon they had collected was 46 years old. Wow, I did not know there were middle-aged sharks. I would love to see a shark midlife crisis. Uh, if there's any way that editors can get a picture of a shark with a little middle-aged goatee here, I would love that. The most concerning part is that 46 is middle age for the megalodon, with scientists theorizing that the megalodon could have lived for up to 100 years or more. With that age in mind, the team could use the data to determine just how large their sample specimen was, multiplying the age by a growth rate, concluding that their young meg was 9.2 meters long, and the largest megalodons on record being up to 15 meters long. Absolutely terrifying. The research showed that baby megalodons would be up to 2 meters long, meaning they would be the size of a basketball player while they were still in their sharky diapers. There's the answer to the question I was asking before. I guess I didn't really want to know. Number 5. Riley's Tooth Eight-year-old Riley Gracely of Pennsylvania discovered something very, very old recently. Okay, come on, we know where this is going. It's a tooth, okay? He found a tooth, a very old tooth. A prehistoric tooth, and a prehistoric discovery to say the least. And that just happened last month in August. But he's no stranger to spotting fossilized teeth, of course, as the family makes it an annual getaway to get out, get some fresh air, and try and dig up the find of a century. The long extinct Carcharoslus angustitans, however, a megatooth brother species of shark who swam next to the infamous Meg species. During their visit to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Riley and his parents were excavating and fossil hunting at a very well-preserved, well-known fossil excursion near Somerville, when the boys stumbled upon this perfectly preserved five-inch extinct shark tooth. Dad had this to say, We vacation in Myrtle Beach every summer, so from the time that Riley and his brother Colin could walk, We've been into searching for these treasures on the beach. Riley's collection is still in its early stages, so he's keeping it for now, but who knows in time, it would be nice for others to enjoy it too. Aw, that's cool. The tooth was identified by the matching of cusps on each side of the tooth and DNA processing. Due to its shape and condition, the find is likely worth thousands of dollars. Collectors call it the find of a lifetime, but Riley Gracely said he's not too sure what he's gonna do with it yet. Buddy, I'm not gonna lie, sell it for college funds. Just trust me, 20 million year old cousin of the Meg? Auction house gonna take that off your hands, no problem. Number four, the Merino Rocks Shark. At number four, also in Australia, that's gonna be a recurring theme, a shark conservation research team was observing local sharks from above in a helicopter surrounding Merino Rocks, a beach on the coast of southern Australia, when one of the researchers spotted a gargantuan great white circling just outside the beach. The shark was estimated to be seven meters long, or 23 feet. Now, great whites rarely extend past 20 feet, so 23 feet was astronomical. 
making this thing one of the largest great white sharks ever recorded on camera. The shark actually matches up pretty decently with the size of the shark from Jaws, which, little Hollywood trivia for you, was intentionally designed to be out of proportion and oversized, which is beyond horrifying if the things we created to intentionally be scary looking is being outdone daily by Mother Nature's own creativity and what she's got cooking underwater. Now the helicopter crew attempted to wrangle this shark out to sea to get a closer look on it and maybe lock it in a steel vault somewhere, but were unsuccessful in any of their attempts to wrangle this thing. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that means whatever this shark is, it's still out there swimming around Marino rocks, hopefully not getting up to too much trouble. Horrifying to think about a pleasant day at the beach and then coming up close and personal with a shark, you know, big enough to swallow you whole and then eat two more of you if it felt like it. Number three, TikTok's Massachusetts Megalodon. Recently, a marine biodiversity student and musician, Alex Albrecht, was on a research cruise with fellow marine biology students when they made a jaw-dropping discovery. And like most people, upon discovering something potentially life-changing, swiftly posted the video to TikTok. Looking over the railing of a cruise ship, swimming around the ship is a behemoth of a shark, estimated to measure in at around 26 feet looking truly prehistoric as it swims around the ship. The video is taken up from the rigging of the ship just to give you a good sense of just how stupendously large this thing is. In the video, one of the researchers can even be loudly heard asking if that's the famed Megalodon swimming around them. Now, obviously after this video was posted, it went viral pretty quick. I mean, it had the attention of everybody, garnering up to 36 million views and catching the attention of shark aficionados, megalodon hunters, and people with a lot more shark authority than me, who suspect that the shark in question is not the legendary megalodon, but in fact a basking shark, one of the largest species of sharks on the planet, dwarfed only by the whale shark in terms of sheer size. Now, you look at this thing, and it's pretty easy to understand why a shark this big could have shocked a fully stocked crew of marine researchers, having them convinced that they've gone toe to toe with the Meg. Basking sharks, luckily enough, are docile and ambivalent towards humans, but look at the inside of this thing. Does this not look like something out of your absolute worst nightmares? Like something out of an H.P. Lovecraft story? This thing could swallow me whole and not even realize it had done it. It's got a mouth like a black hole. The only comfort I'm finding is that if this thing is swimming around the shores of Boston, if it causes any trouble, surely Mark Wahlberg is there to protect us. Number two, Mariana's Trench Sighting. Now besides sharing the name with the Canadian smash hit pop band, the Mariana's Trench is notable for being the deepest trench in our oceans, meaning if anything absolutely spine chilling was living under the radar, away from the prying eye of research crews, there is a fairly good chance it would be swimming around down here. I mean, over 80% of our oceans remain unexplored, and in that uncharted 80%, scientists theorize that roughly two-thirds of all oceanic life has yet to be discovered. It's a testament to just how deep and dark our oceans run, so it's not uncommon for theorists to suspect that this is where the mighty prehistoric megalodon could be hiding. And footage released in 2018 might be the evidence to prove that. In this footage, a behemoth of a shark can be seen swimming by what looks to be an abandoned shark cage of some sort. And from the image and video, the shark dwarfs the cage. Its head alone conjures up the imagery we expect when thinking of the mighty megalodon. I, I mean, just look at the size of this thing. You can move a family of four inside that thing's mouth and still have room for a sublet on the side. Now the clip is a bit shocking and obviously got a lot of attention on it, meaning experts peer in and the clip doesn't have everyone convinced. Some skeptics believe that the shark in question is not the megalodon, but rather a species of shark called a sleeper shark, another species of enormous shark that can grow up to sizes of up to 23 feet long and lives thousands of feet below sea level, adapting to extreme temperatures, even able to live underneath volcanoes. If a shark as extreme as the sleeper shark is swimming around there, it doesn't take too much of a stretch of the imagination to wonder if it's joined by anything like the Megalodon. Number one, the 1918 sighting. Our number one spot is also our oldest recorded entry and a story that popularized the modern haunt for the prehistoric titan. In the early 19th century, a group of lobster fishermen outside of, I mean, come on, we all know where it took place. Do I even need to say it? Australia. The story took place in Australia, almost all of these did. These lobster fishermen were shaken to their core when the men claimed that they had seen a shark of preposterous size. Naturalist David Stead provided a written description of the sighting, which is what we've been going on. 
writing that the men had been at work on the fishing grounds, which lie in deep water, when an immense shark of almost unbelievable proportions put in an appearance, lifting pot after pot containing many crayfishes, and taking, as the men said, the pots, mooring lines, and all. These crayfish pots, it should be mentioned, were about 3 feet 6 inches in diameter and frequently contained from 2 to 3 dozen good sized crayfish each weighing several pounds. The men were all unanimous that this shark was something the like of which they had never dreamed of. The claims from the fishermen was that the shark was somewhere between 115 feet to a staggering 300 feet. The men insisted that the water boiled as this beast swam past. And as if this salty old campfire story wasn't scaring you enough already, the men also all claimed to Together, that the shark was a ghastly white, calling to mind the white whale from Moby Dick. Unfortunately, since it was the 19th century, we don't have a convenient TikTok to watch over and over and analyze frame by frame, so we have to take whatever scraps we can get, which is the word of a bunch of old lobster fishermen. It's entirely possible that, you know, a few beers deep and 12 hours in the sun would cause you to start to see anything. But, by that same token, it could just have been likely that these men witnessed something thought long extinct.